just didn't make sense, right? Yeah. No, one coming in April, though. So life's about to get very busy. Thanks to everybody for coming today, both online and in person. We have another event co hosted by Small Cap Power and Gravitas Securities Inc. Today we have David McMillan, CEO of Devron UAS Corp., traded on the CSE DVR. So David, I'll uh, hand it over to you. Great. Thanks so much, Jared. I guess I'll come over here. Well, thank you all for uh, coming today, both uh, in here, here at Gravitas's office in Toronto and also online. Uh, really excited to introduce, I think really to the world, this company that we've been building uh, since 2014. Uh, so Devron is a drone data solution specifically focused on agriculture. Uh, our goal is to build North America's largest network uh, of on-demand drone solutions for farmers. So what we basically do is we fly drones over farmers' fields uh, all around this country and provide them with data to make decisions that increase their yield and reduce their costs. Uh, we started this idea of a network predominantly because we know lots of farmers, and we know that farmers find this data to be valuable. The issue is that farmers want to farm, so they don't spend time choosing which drone to buy, figuring out which sensor they need, how do you get all this data to the cloud. So this is sort of this all-in-one business-to-business solution uh, that at the end of the day is about creating value for farmers. Um, so I'm going to walk through the presentation today. Um, if anyone in the room has questions, feel free to interject or we can wait till the end. I'm pretty relaxed on it all. So forward looking statements. <clears throat> so in a snapshot, this is what we're trying to build. Um, we're already one of the leading enterprise drone data service companies in North America. And it's specifically because a lot of the money that's come out of Silicon Valley into drones and robotics and software and analytics uh, is focused on that end solution. Uh, nobody's really focused on the pragmatic issue of how do you collect all of this data at scale. So a lot of people have been buying drones uh, on the commercial and hobby level, not so much on the farm. Uh, so the data is valuable, they just have a problem in a farmer wants his data Wednesday morning. He doesn't want to spend all Tuesday out flying his farm. So that's where this network uh, idea came from. Um, so we're, we're focused on that. And then number two, I think for us, that really helps establish this idea of a first mover uh, in the marketplace is our partnership with Monsanto. So Monsanto purchased a data company called Climate Corp in 2014. Uh, we just signed an integration uh, platform partnership with them in November. Uh, so now Devron has direct links to 
one of the most successful farming data Silicon Valley focused uh, companies in the world. And it gives us access to 120 million acres of uh, Climate Corp's customers. So really excited about that. We're also working across this country and in the US with over 20 individual farming enterprises. Uh, and again, these are all folks that have millions of acres under management uh, that are currently customers buying other products from them. And, and we're now selling our data solution uh, through these people. When we think about a network effect and what we're really trying to build, we like this industry because it has strong barriers to entry. Um, once you become this premier established network, it's really hard for anyone else to envision how they would take over the leadership that Devron has already started to build. Um, Last year, we completed over 2,500 drone flights for farmers and farm customers. Uh, I think to my knowledge, that's the largest drone company in Canada uh, in terms of a flight by flight basis. The most exciting thing for me is also being involved in a uh, market that you're seeing really big change happening. Um, so agriculture is finally digitizing. So it's one of these last industries on earth uh, to sort of in Embrace technology and start using uh, data as a, a way to drive decision making. And for those of you like that come from the public venture markets world, we haven't seen so many ag tech stories come to market, but agriculture technology is being backed out of Silicon Valley by leaders like Google Ventures and Kleiner Perkins. Uh, and now actually the number is about $10 billion in venture funding in the last two years have gone into startups trying to change the way that farmers make decisions on the farm. And so we see drones as a very key tie into this uh, whole change that's happening. Quickly, here's our cap table. So uh, there's 25 million shares out. Uh, we did our first round um, back in 2015, it closed, and that was at 20 cents. And we raised uh, another $2 million last year uh, at about 35 cents. And our group here in Toronto, including myself and my co-founder, uh, and Greek Hustle Resources owns about 46% of the company. So in investing with Devron, you're investing with myself, uh, my 100 hour work weeks to scale this company into North America's leader. And I think sometimes in public venture capital, you don't necessarily see management and insiders so closely aligned with shareholders. Quick overview of what we actually do. Um, so we have all these drones across the country. We train pilots who fly them. And then we work with farmers to figure out okay, what data do you need on your farm? And I'll go into what kind of data we provide later in the presentation. So we make that assessment. Our drones and our pilots then go out to farm fields in Saskatchewan and Manitoba and Ontario. Uh, we fly these fields and then we provide farmers with this data. So this data helps them make decisions and see things on the farm that they normally haven't been able to see. So you can see what's happening with your corn plants in certain sections of the farm. Uh, traditionally, farmers would wait until the end of the year and harvest. They'd get their yield data and say, oh wow, we really had poor, for, poor performing sections of the farm. I guess next year we'll make a better decision. This is a chance in mid-July to say, maybe we should put some more nitrogen down. Maybe we should spray some more fungicide. Maybe we have a pest infestation. So it's really in-season data-driven analytics uh, that is changing the way that farming is happening. And drone data is a really important layer in this whole process. <coughs> When I started the company, I had a cold call list of 15,000 farmers across Ontario, and I started calling them up and saying, can we have our drones fly your field? Really quickly, we realized that wasn't gonna be a way to scale. Um, so we started going out into the market where uh, these large agricultural companies already have you know, three, four generation relationships that have been established with growers. Um, so we sort of sell our data solution to them, and then they introduce it to their pipeline of growers. Uh, and the example I gave earlier with Climate Corp, now Devron doesn't have to build a sales force to get in front of 120 million acres of, of farmers, which is 100,000 farmers. Uh, Climate Corp is introducing Devron's data solution uh, to them across North America. So we're pretty excited about how that's going to continue to drive uh, channel sales uh, for the company as we move forward. And when I say building a standardized network, this is basically what I mean. We started in Ontario with three pilots and three drones. Uh, we had over 20 drones across uh, Canada and to some select areas of the United States last year. Um, <laughs> a big achievement for us at the beginning of 2017 was gaining national compliance from Transport Canada. So to fly drones in this country, you have, you're regulated by Transport Canada. We're one of only a few companies that have a, a national SFOC, so 
we can fly drones from British Columbia out to Prince Edward Island, uh, all under the same license. Um, so for, for us, it actually, it allows a large enterprise farming customer that might have assets in Saskatchewan, Manitoba, and Prince Edward Island to deal with us on one standardized contract, as opposed to an individual person who owns a drone would need a different license for each province. So we found that that's been a really great solution for business to business sales as we've uh, built the company. And then moving forward, we're gonna be looking at launching uh, a much more significant uh, US data coverage. Uh, and that will be with current partners as well as uh, other new farming customers. Uh, so we're really excited about that. And in terms of how many acres of farmland there are, just to give you guys some perspective, in Canada, we have about 85 million acres of farmland. And in the US, there's 315 million acres. So the size of the market is about four times larger, and which is now that we start to have this success, a key reason for us wanting to expand into the US. It's a really short synopsis of our sort of milestones. Um, we received our SFOC, as I mentioned earlier, and we started working with these large farming enterprises. So Bayer, Bondwell is the largest producer of frozen vegetables in the world. Um, Cargill, household name, Cavendish, obviously, I think the second largest producer of potatoes in the world. Growmark is a traditional ag retailer cooperative. So these folks buy chemical and seed product at large scale and then sell it down to all their customers. Hensel District Cooperative has been one of our uh, first customers. They manage about a million acres of farmland in Ontario, very data driven and progressive and uh, some other names. I think again, when I look back at 2017 and our largest accomplishments, um, you know, our data partnership with Climate Corp is a huge significant win. On the platform that uh, Monsanto has been building for data-driven agriculture, there's only 11 companies in the world that have access uh, to their customers. So I think for a little tiny company out of Canada, uh, it really validates the business model. And I think as we continue to move forward is gonna give us lots of opportunity to get in front of farming customers. Where are we headed? Um, as I say, it's, it's really when you're building a network about increasing the number of drones that you have under management, training more pilots, uh, and increasing uh, our data coverage. So as I say, growing out the geographies that we currently touch organically, and then also going into these new markets. Now the drone data and farming market is in its early days. Um, Goldman Sachs put out a report in 2016 that said all of precision agriculture, which you can all think of as agriculture driven by data, is worth $240 billion by the year 2050. So we're after something that is fundamentally enormous um, and new. And I think that's what's been the most exciting for us. PricewaterhouseCooper came up with a report on the commercial drone market as a whole. So consumption and natural resources and pipeline and farming, uh, billing it at a $127 billion. And when we look at specifically the applications of drones in agriculture, um, which is mostly using data to drive mapping and geospatial data solutions and analytics, um, it's about a $32.4 billion market. I'll go through a slide in a minute that sort of addresses some of these uh, opportunities in more detail, but just so you have a, a um, sorry, just so everybody has some prospect of, of what we're after here. One of the things that we wanted to make sure when we started the company uh, was that we weren't chasing some pipeline of a dream. Uh, so I actually found a company in France that we do share some data analytics work with now. Um, but they had started in 2014 where regulation for drones was a lot more progressive than here in North America. And uh, to date have been covering upwards of one sixth of the entire French agricultural market with drone data. So for us, it's really great confirmation that farmers are finding value in this data. And if we can do something similar here in Canada or in the United States, where you have a $400 million uh, or 400 million acre market, uh, unlike in France, which is 6 million, there's obviously a huge runway for the business to scale. When I was talking about Silicon Valley earlier, it's also uh, a huge movement in ag tech from the majors. So I mentioned that uh, our partner Climate Corp was purchased by Monsanto in 2014 for $1.1 billion. John Deere purchased a artificial intelligence spray technology company started by some PhDs from MIT uh, this year for 305 million. DuPont Pioneer, which is about the second largest farming company in the world, uh, 
purchased Granular, which is a data platform, uh, for 305 million. And Cargill has made investments in all sorts of things, but uh, for us, confirmation of this uh, data market and imagery, uh, Descartes Lab, which is a, also Google Ventures backed. So all the big guys have internal uh, venture capital companies that are investing in data-driven agriculture, uh, as well as you know, some of the smartest people out of Silicon Valley, including Google Ventures and Kleiner Perkins. Uh, Fairfax made a significant acquisition from a Winnipeg data-driven agriculture company last year called Farmer's Edge. So we're starting to see the space uh, pick up, uh, infrastructure is being built, farmers are starting to buy data, uh, and that's just it's a really exciting place to be. I was talking about these total addressable markets earlier, and I think the one we like to focus on in general is field monitoring, data management, uh, being a $35 billion opportunity. But I think all of these applications have some opportunity for drone data. If you're thinking about flying a drone over someone's farm and then using that information to apply fertilizer in a smarter way, um, apply water in a better way, apply pesticides and fungicides in a better way, everything about coming up with the prescriptions or data management tools to say, we want to put 100 pounds of nitrogen in this corner of the field and then 50 pounds of nitrogen in this corner, you need to use satellite imagery, drone imagery, airplane imagery to build these models. So this whole thing is, I guess in the last like five to 10 years has really started to see pickup in agriculture. Um, and I think that's why it's just so exciting to be at the ground floor of this opportunity. Really the most important part on this slide that I wanna talk about is this number here, imprecise applications of inputs. So in Goldman Sachs report, they mentioned that over there's a 40% over fertilization of fields. Now, what does that mean in economic terms? The average grower in North America maybe spends about $200 an acre on inputs. So if we're saying that there's 40% over application of the, those acres, that's about $80 an acre in direct savings just through inefficiencies of putting fertilizer and chemical and fungicide down on the farm. So if we can use drone data to help drive more efficient decision making there, you'll see how there's such a huge value proposition for a farmer. Imagine someone out in Saskatchewan that farms 50,000 acres. And if you're telling them that there's $80 an acre in inefficient application of input, that's real money. And that's what we're really after. And this is how the company views um, the market opportunity in our revenue model. So there's 400 million acres of commercial arable land in North America. We charge anywhere from $3 to $5 per data service. Um, and by that I mean, when a drone flies over someone's field uh, with one sensor, uh, we charge about three to five dollars. There's volume discounts if someone is coming to the company and saying we would want to buy 100,000 acres at scale. Um, but in a general sense, with 30% penetration rates and the, the fact that since we've started the company, we've started to see our users use drones upwards of two or three times a season, uh, there's this market opportunity today of a billion dollars. So we think that we're on the right path. It's now just a question of continuing to get more uh, customers and, uh, and scaling the service. Really quickly, this is just to some extent what our integration looks like. So now when you go to the Climate Field View website, uh, Devron's logo is on there with 11 other companies, including John Deere and Agrium has a data product called Echelon. Uh, so it's now We've built a back-end system, and this integration should be done in the next couple of weeks, where any Monsanto user, our ClimateCorp user, can log into Devron's website with their user ID and order a drone flight. So we're, we're building this easy button for farmers so that there's no excuse of, well, I don't even know where to start with using a drone. All they have to do is click, and then their data goes into ClimateCorp's platform, where everything else that is being managed on the farm is currently being tracked. We're extremely focused on service, uh, partly because I think at the end of the day, going out and getting the customer is the most important thing and working with them to drive this decision making. But it's also a little bit of the opportunity that we identified back in 2014. <laughs> so many companies out of Silicon Valley have been focused on technology and robotics and, and IP. So it's much more of a software hardware play. Um, and then the people that are flying drones, they have a problem in that they're trying to monetize their drone on a daily basis. So they're trying to provide solutions for every industry. 
we're very focused on agriculture and it's more, we think that there's this huge opportunity in ag data to drive decision making on the farm and we happen to use drones. Other people are, drones are cool, who from what industry will pay us some money to fly their assets? Um, so just kind of a snapshot of who's doing what in the space. I think our team is one of the most um, important reasons for why we're doing this. My background is in public venture capital, um, hence why we're sort of here in the public markets. Uh, and even more important is my co-founder, Norm. So Norm's a farmer from just outside of Toronto. He runs a 500 acre family farm. And four years ago, I guess now when I first met him, he was the one guy uh, flying a drone on his farm and then for some of his neighbors. And he was getting phone calls all over Ontario of, hey, are you the drone guy? Will you come down to Chatham and fly 100 acres for me? It made no sense for him to drive five hours to fly one farmer's field. But it's where a lot of this ideas came from. Of if we could position people strategically around where farmers operated and we could get drones out into their farm very quickly, there was an opportunity to build a network. Um, have a really good group of board of directors, including, you know, Roger Dent and Jim Peary, Chris Irwin, and James Borland. And then I think uh, from our end and validation of this business model that farmers are starting to care a lot about data. Um, we just announced this back in December. Ian Grant is the ex-CEO of DuPont Pioneer Canada, so ran a billion dollar business for 13 years. Knows everyone in farming, what used to take me 12 months of cold calling and LinkedIn uh, prospecting. Hey, I'd like to meet XYZ at this company and Ian can make a phone call. So it's been really helpful for us now in getting in front of large farming companies. And also Art Frelick, who's on the board of uh, Richardson's, which is one of Canada's most important farming companies. So I think these guys have seen and built successful agriculture businesses. And I think it's a really great confirmation for us on one, the drone you know, network model, but also that farmers uh, are going to be using this data moving forward. Dave Masadi, I'll just mention quickly, he's a sort of public company technology visionary, uh, was on the board of Comdev, which was purchased by Honeywell a few years ago for 450 million. Uh, he's also on the board of Ferrand Technology Group. Um, so Dave came out of Harvard and started working for Ted Rogers and helped bring uh, cable internet to this country. So he's always been excited about network plays and I think for me as an entrepreneur, it's been really great to be able to bounce ideas off of someone like that who's seen a few things grow. So just to summarize uh, what we're doing in ag tech and, and drones is, is sort of the specific product, but I think from an investment perspective, uh, there's three really great themes here. Um, one in general, ag tech investment is not on traditional investors radar. If you talk to the majority of people around this country in the US, uh, people maybe just assume that farmers were already using digital technology. Uh, so there's this amazing opportunity to build new products uh, that farmers will be using. In general, um, big companies are a little bit slow to build entrepreneurial things, especially drone data and network uh, plays nobody is really focused on. So we see a really great opportunity for a low, uh, low cost lean startup to scale, be really scrappy, and then build value for these large growers. And then third, you know, in Canada, I think people forget that we do things other than just mining and minerals and marijuana and blockchain. Uh, agriculture is a $3 trillion a year global market. So the opportunities here to build something of value in a really large space are, are quite uh, phenomenal. So as I said at the beginning, my name is David McMillan. I'm this president and CEO of Devron. Uh, I hope that gives everyone an overview of, of what we've been building, where we're heading, and the opportunity in drones and agriculture technology. So thank you so much for uh, taking the time to listen to me today. Thanks, David. So we can start with questions, any questions in the room? Hi. Uh, satellite originally should be the same sort of thing. Satellite is, it, we, we've always looked at a much more complementary technology. So if you can imagine, and I didn't touch on this in the presentation, the average resolution of, of satellite data is about a meter. Uh, 0.8 meters is the best sort of commercially available. And that's giving people m more of like, we look at it as a alert size data. So if you're managing 200 farms, you start to be able to say, okay, these 15 farms, there's something going on with them. And then the drone comes in at two centimeter data. So it's much more plant level. Uh, and is, so it's, it's more of a complementary satellite can drive where the drone can go. 
And then like the future of data analytics and artificial intelligence is all being based on this very, very high resolution drone based data. We're trying to work with a company out of Israel that is doing artificial intelligence on individual plants and with their sensors, you can actually see an individual bug on a leaf. And so that becomes a very valuable uh, decision making tool for a farmer to say, Ooh, looks like there's pressure of uh, some form of pest in this area of the farm and they can go out and spray that area directly. You're never going to get that with satellite. Yeah. Um, how many acres can you fly say, in an hour with a drone? Uh, so we, we don't use the traditional sort of helicopter drones that maybe some of you guys have seen or your kids have up at the cottage. Uh, it's a miniature airplane. Um, they do about like 225 acres in, in 40 ish minutes. And then they sort of land at our feet, you replace the battery and then you, you can move on to the next field. Um, it's funny here in Ontario, there's no, there's no challenge to uh, efficiencies because the fields are a lot smaller as we've been working out in Western Canada. It's the, the scale is so much larger. Uh, so we're playing with models of, you know, sort of have two or three pilots attack like a 5,000 acre block from different directions. Um, so we're, we're figuring it all out sort of as we go along for scale, but yeah, that's a general amount. Okay. Figure say three to five dollars per acre. Yeah. And I think the, the other thing about the revenue model is this is sort of almost like customer acquisition cost pricing. So it's about getting out there and working with these folks as technology improves. And we're able to say that, hey, this data has helped the farmer save $150 of acre, uh, per acre on fertilizer. I think the pricing model can change, as well as as sensors improve and analytics improve. It's, this is really about like, you should be using this drone data to help drive decision making today. And in the future, once we have that customer and we're, we're continuing able to validate the savings on the farm, I think the pricing model can change. And do you own that data? Um, depends on who we work with. Uh, in Climacorp and Monsanto, uh, all of their farmers own the data. We have the ability to sort of use it uh, at the aggregate to drive other forms of decision making. Um, for some growers, we provide a per perpetual license, so we do own the data. Um, our real interest is, at the end of the day, scaling up this data set and then working with artificial intelligence folks to figure out new analytics we can pull out of it. Um, kind of interesting, like we keep everything on Amazon Web Server and I've got, I think now 16 terabytes of high resolution crop data um, that's sitting there that I start to think, you know, what can a, a smart PhD from Stanford running computer code uh, pull out of all this information? Um, so it's one of the more unique data sets, like I think in the world, and that's what we're also excited about as we move forward. Well, you should do with integrity with the uh, gold channel, you should have uh, an ag channel. Yeah, you get the world's smartest people to come in and pull ideas. That's a really good idea. They did that with, uh, I'll send you the link to the... Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to take a look at that. Sure. Um, and so you're saying you charge them charge three to five dollars per acre. Mm -hmm. uh, and you try to do it two or three times a year as the season's going on. Yep. And, it's, and then it's different if we're working with like an enterprise customer um, who wants 50,000 acres done in certain areas. There's volume discounts that apply. Um, and it's, this is also more of like, as we, again, continue to scale, I think that's the, the sweet spot. And you, you said there's 400 uh, million acres of farmland in North America. Correct. So uh, currently, how much do you do and uh, under? Yeah, so last year we, we flew about 250,000 acres across North America. Yeah. And how many drones and pilots do you need? Uh, at, at long term, like to do 400 million. <laughs> Uh, we had about 20. Yeah. And are they employees or are they just contractors? All employees. It's very, very important to our model is to have employees. So one of the problems of, of this network approach is imagine a large enterprise customer who says, okay, I'd like to have data collected in just for a simple example, Manitoba and Ontario. Uh, if they're not employees, there's very fractured uh, pricing of, okay, Mr. Consultant, like what's your time worth in Manitoba versus Ontario? Um, so we've taken the leadership of saying we guarantee the job and it's our job as a sales company to make sure that we backfill the acres. And, and the way I think about the financial metrics is at full capacity, a drone can probably do about 50,000 acres a year in flying. So you're looking at uh, about, you know, 150 to $250,000 in total potential revenue generation. 
and our costs really to run it are our salary and gasoline to get from site to site. So at scale and backfill of contracts, drones working all day every day, it's a really high gross margin business just on the data collection side. And we haven't even gotten into post data collection, what type of monetization can we do in providing the analytics itself. So you're saying one drone you think can do 50,000 acres per year? Yeah, so like logistically, I think you start to get tapped out unless, again, the drone gross season, like the gross season here in Canada and for the most, most part of North America is like May to mid-September. Um, but the drones are this big, they fit on a carry-on. There's no reason why with some of our platform partners like Monsanto, who has acres in Brazil, these drones can't be moving south and then sort of flying all year. And then they can obviously fly. One pilot to do that 50,000 acres per year. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. But if they were able to be flying then in South America, they could do 100,000 acres. And it'd be the sweetest summer job or gap year job of all time. They need water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what would it take to be qualified to be a pilot? Uh, all of our pilots, have, they can fly private aircraft. They actually come out of the uh, flight cadet, air cadet program here in Canada and the U.S. Uh, in the U.S., the regulation is a little bit different, so the FAA regulates things slightly differently than in Canada. So in Canada, everyone that we employ has to fly under our special flight operating certificate. Um, so one of the questions we were always asked when we first started the company as well, at some point you're going to have a supply shortage of pilots. We put out a call for employees last year uh, just through the Ontario network um, for five pilot jobs and we got 82 uh, prospective pilots. So the pipeline of folks that are coming out of the Air Cadet program that are looking for summer jobs is, is very vibrant. So what did you get paid uh, It's just about minimum wage. Yeah. Minimum wage. yeah. And that the amazing thing, and the amazing thing about the model has been that because they come out of the like flight cadet program, if, when we first started the company, it's like okay, you're giving these guys fifty thousand dollars worth of hardware, you know, how, can we trust them? But they've all been flying Cessna airplanes for the last three, four years. They they follow instructions, they follow process, and I also give a lot of credit to my co-founder on that. He, so before Norm came back to the family farm, he spent ten years in aviation, so he's. He's trained and ran 150 pilots that were flying airplanes. Uh, we understand how Transport Canada and regulation works. Um, so it's really important to the operator model to have that. And then you can start to see how big of a challenge it would be for a farming company that's really good at selling seed and chemical and why like getting into the logistics of moving a massive network of drones all around is not something they want to do. So of this 400 million acres that's out there in North America, how much do you think right now is actually under some sort of data drone type of service? I'd say penetration in drones is, from some of the statistics I've seen, 10 to 15%. Um, precision ag and any form of like a data platform uh, or data solution is probably north of 30 now. So it's gotten past the point of tinkerers in their garage. I think the validation is there. It's just about scaling. I mean, if you look at the growth of Climate Corp, um, I think originally they were only on 3 million acres of users, and now they have 120 million acres uh, penetration. So it's like that to me is validation that data is real, and now they're building this ecosystem where bolt-on companies can build uh, really cool data solutions on top of what's being tracked. Yeah. So but you still, even though there's other competitors out there flying and there's still there's room for you guys to go in and capture more of the market? Yeah, there's, there's, no, there's mom and pops. There's no organized entity that is focused on specifically an agriculture drone data solution, which is why we want to continue to scale very quickly. And I think it would be naive of us to not embrace this Monsanto partnership and get into new markets working with them. And how many total people in your company now? So full-time full headcount, three. We've been running things very lean until we had the foundation of things built. Uh, and then 20 part-time pilots. Um, and so I think the goal this year, uh, a few things happen, is to try to maybe double the size of the network. Then you got to double the number of ways? Uh, on part-time uh, pilots, yeah. But at headcount, at head office, we, you know, I'd like to get a VP of channel sales, uh, invest on the sales side, 
and then um, build out our little online platform for flight management. But a lot of that stuff can be done on a consulting side. You don't need a full-time in-house engineer. What type of other applications do you use this for? Progress So, like, what other industries? Yeah. Yeah. So, we've been shy to to look directly at other verticals, partly because for me as a CEO. If I'm going and meeting the CEO of uh, Climacorp, it's tough for me to also be credible with a uh, meeting in oil and gas. Like it's very industry focused today. That being said, the beautiful idea about building this network is as soon as we have scale, we're the lowest cost provider of data. Uh, and there's no reason why a pilot who's based in uh, Saskatoon, who's flying farmland, also can't be flying uh, a mine site for volumetric analysis. Uh, when we get to the point of beyond visual line of sight in this country, uh, pipeline inspection is a huge opportunity. So we feel like rather than being jack of all trades and not really good at anything, our focus is very much specific today, but with the idea of once a network is built, there's obvious applications. And I would say you know, construction, mining, oil and gas pipeline are the next three biggest opportunities. So when you have an opportunity like with Mons the Climate Corporation to have 120 million hey. acres under management, yeah. then how do you start capturing more of that for your services? Or, or are you competing with other partners in that ecosystem? Um, so the partners in the climate ecosystem, there's nobody doing drone data collection. There's companies that are doing drone data analysis, which is very complementary okay. to what we do. Um, there are a few companies on the platform that are doing airplane data collection, but again, they're not getting the resolution. So these guys can fly more acres, but they can't get at the end of the day, the resolution that the future data scientists want. Um, so really it's, it's partnership based. So here in Canada, we were down at a show with uh, Climacorp two weeks ago and their senior leadership gives a presentation talking about their data platform. And they mentioned Devron 18 times. Uh, they have sales reps that deal with Monsanto's customers in general who are now talking about Devron's data solution. So it's, it's more of when Devron makes a decision to go into a new market, we sort of have some intel of this is maybe where we would start your flight network. And then it's just per, you know, constant marketing and communication. Uh, we have found like egg is in this like hockey stick uh, software week by week feedback, but it's, you get a customer, they give you a small percentage of their acres you show them value and then the next year they come back for more and then the next year for more. So there's, there's quite a bit of ways for the revenue and the company to grow. You get it through your current customer uh, and you also get it through these new network nodes that we'll be building. And what was your 2017 uh, So the last quarter we published was 160,000 ish. Um, so we're making money. We're not you know, scaling up to a, a crazy amounts yet, but I think for us, we haven't tried to scale until we could prove that we could monetize data. Uh, and now that we're there and we have these partners, uh, I think this is sort of the beginning. Yeah. So what percentage, when you get a steady state, what percentage of your costs are you fixed? Uh, so it's the only cost involved, basically, so we have to buy the drone, which right now systems are about thirty-five to 40000 uh, We amortize them over two years, but since we've been in business, we've never had to write off a drone, like they're still flying. Uh, and then it's just the full-time salary of the employee through the season uh, and then their gasoline costs, which have really never been more than about $15,000 in operating costs for the drone itself. Um, so that's like why for me, it's such an exciting model. And um, I think that if we can continue to drive sales on each drone in each local area, it's all margin and we're running things. Well, what I don't see then is it seems like there's Another drone, another pilot. Yeah. Yeah, you, you need to spend money to get into each new network, absolutely. But I think because the industry is so new, it's not, we aren't being like completely steamrolled over and, you know, need $20 million to buy new drones for demand. But I would say like that would be the best case scenario, right? Like the whole point of having the public company is to start seeing that this demand is here and being able to use the equity capital markets to finance growth. But then but then you take that data, I mean, isn't the eventual goal not just collecting the data, but the analytics of the data? Correct. Yep. You're saying you're going to partner with analytics companies, or yep. are you providing that as well? Right now, it's, uh, the strategy is more partner-focused, so I've been speaking with lots of analytics firms out of Silicon Valley and Europe, and the amazing thing about this whole thing is they have a big problem. 
farmers aren't buying drones. So there's no way for them to provide analytics to customers. We aren't focused on providing analytics and think it's too early in the industry to choose who's going to be the next Microsoft. So what we'd rather do is create an opportunity, maybe it's a revenue share partnership where Devron introduces our customers to these leading analytics companies who can then market their product to all of our growers. And we take a small slice for that introduction. And it's valuable for our customers because now all this data lives in the cloud. You don't have to send it around anywhere. Nobody's asking for it. They can just click you know, weed identification map, pest prescription, nitrogen redistribution prescription. So I think it's early days. I'm not promising that that's going to happen this year, but I think it's something that we've been focusing on from day one. The first fundamental problem is you can't do drone data at scale. So that's what we're solving by building the network. And I think in the future, obviously, the upside on the capital markets is not just being a data creating company, but also an information decision making company. Um, in Canada, there really, there honestly isn't anyone. Uh, in the U.S., there's uh, there's one company called Precision Hawk that's raised uh, some venture capital money. They just closed on a large, a pretty large round, but they're not focused directly on flight services. They're again more focused on uh, analytics and building this like data management tool. So we think that only being focused on scaling this logistics solution is a really good place to be, uh, and it's hard. It's not. And network plays like there's no direct IP until you get big, but at the same time, having been out there building it, we see so many challenges with it that we think nobody's really going to want to figure it out themselves. And about the 20% penetration, is that sort of like your base case scenario for which market you're going to capture? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's more an example. It's more, I don't know, I wish I had a very descriptive, realistic timeline today. I'm just more saying, you know, theoretically, this, this brand new market has this revenue opportunity of X. Um, and because we've already monetized and we know that people will pay, it's a question of now scaling with them. Yeah. I think most of the online questions were covered, so we'll, uh, we'll end it off there. Great. So thanks again to uh, David McMillan for coming in and everybody online and in person uh, listening today. And David will stick around for a little bit afterwards if you have some more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.